Okay, we say we can provide so many mechanisms to keep the reliable service from the TCP. The first one is establish the connection before we transmit the packets. So this way we call it three-way handshake to establish the connection. For example, now here we have the PC1 and the server. And now if the PC1 want to send message to the server, I will send the TCP packets to the server and these packets we call it SYN packets. And about these packets, we have the sequence number. For example, we use the A to indicate the sequence and number. And this message you can see like the function of the hello, hi, I want to send a message to you, do you exist? Something like this. And when the server receives a message from PC1, I will give a reply. And about this reply, we have two functions. The first one, we have to tell with the PC1, I exist. And the second function is, I also have to give the acknowledgement, I receive the hello message from you. So how to meet the requirement of two functions? The server will give send out the packets, and this packet, the sequence number is B. And A and B, maybe the number is same, maybe it's different. They don't have any relationship. But the ACK number, this one has a special meaning. The number will become AL1. And this AL1 means tell the PC1, I already received the message from you, the sequence number is A. So this is two way to the handshake. And about the PC1, I received the message from the server. I also have to give the reply. And about this reply, the sequence number will become A21. That's because I already sent the message of the sequence A to the server and the server received successfully. And I will give the next message and the sequence number is A21. And the ACK number will become B21. The B21 means I will give the acknowledgement of the server. I already received the message, the sequence number is B successfully. So this is the first step to establish three-way handshake to establish the connection. So this is the first one. After we establish the connection, we want to transmit the message, right? And uh, when we transmission the message, we have two mechanisms. One we call is acknowledgement, and another one we call is window. So what means acknowledgement? During the date transmission, the sender will send the date of the size of the window, and the receiver only confirms it once is enough. And the second one, if the receiver's response capaci capacity is insufficient, the window size will be adjusted. And the receiver will send the data according to the new window. So these are two principles when we transmit the message between the sender and the receiver. I also will send an example for you. For example, also the PC1 and the server, now we establish the connection, right? And then the TCP, the, P, the PC1 will send out three segments, and each segment will, will have the sequence number A, A at 1, A at 2, and the Windows number is 3. 3 means I will send out the three segments at the same time. And when the server receives this message, first, we will give a reply, right? I already received all the messages you sent to me. This is the first one we have to send. The second one, I also have to check the compatibility from my side. If the compatibility is not matched, I also will give a reply. Please maybe reduce the window size. That means next time maybe you can send less message and I will deal with the message and then you can continue sending the message to me. So how to meet the requirement of the server? I will give the acknowledgement. The acknowledgement number is A and 3 and the windows number is 2. So about the PC1 receive this message from the server, the next part I will give a reply. 
And uh, I only send two segments to you. The first six member is eight to three, and the second is eight to four. But now the windows will to become two, and I only send two segments to server. Okay, so this is uh, the transmission mechanism of the acknowledgement and the window. And about the server also will give a reply. The ACK number will become eight to five and the window to become two. If my resource is enough, I maybe will change the window to become three. And in this process, maybe some message in the network is missing. For example, when a packet fails to trans transmit due to the network problem, right? Maybe your cable is down, is up or down, so some message will be discarded. And the receiver only acknowledges the previous packet. So let's see the detailed process. For example, PC1 sends three segments to the server. Right, and each segment we have the sequence number A, A to 1, A to 2. And in this process, maybe the third segment is missing. So, how to find this problem? About the server, I only received two segments. So, when I send the message to you, the AC key number will become A to 2, A add 2. Because if I receive three segments, the so ACK number should become A add three, right? Now I give you the number is A add two. That means I only receive the message, the sequence number is A and A plus one. And the windows number to still to become three. That means I don't change the window size. I have enough resources to deal with the message. So when PC1 receive this acknowledgement, acknowledgement from the server. The next part, I send the message to you, I will begin the sequence number to become A to 2. And because the window is 3, so I will continue send the message of A, A plus 3 and A plus 4. So this is a process. And if I receive these three segments successfully, I will give the acknowledgement of A at 5, and the window size still 3. So this is a mechanism of retransmission. If I only receive some, um, some segment from the sender and someone may be lost, or maybe someone with, uh, maybe is wrong, I will use the A sequence number to let the sender to give us a new message again. So this is a process. And later, maybe we finish to transmit the message from sender and the receiver. We have to say hello, uh, say bye, uh, say goodbye with each other. And about the ending, we also have to keep the reliable ending. So this way we call it four-way handshake. After the date transmission, four-way handshake to delete the connection. Let's see the process, PC1 and the server. And uh, the PC1 will send the message out, and this we call is FIN packet, and the sequence number is A. Also, maybe this A maybe is different with uh, the A we establish the connection. It doesn't matter. Okay, this only is a character we indicate the sequence number. And when the server give, receives this FIM package, and the FIM package, you can see this is a goodbye. PC1 will send the message to server, I already received everything from you, now I want to say goodbye to you. And uh, about the TCP, every message I receive, I will give the acknowledgement to you. So the server will send out the ACK, the ACK number will become A to 1. That means the direction from PC1 to server is broken. Okay, is uh, delete successfully. But we have to delete to uh, bidirectional between PC1 and the server. So the server later also will send out the FIM packets, the sequence number to become P, to become B. Okay, now I also want to say goodbye to you, to PC1. And the PC1 will give a reply. And this reply, the ACQ number is B, B at 1. So this is the four-way handshake. So 
we will use this mechanism to provide the reliable service before transmission, in the transmission, and after the transmission. And compare with the TCP, the UDP is very easy. And uh, the function of UDP is provide the service as soon as possible. So about the UDP, the name is User Discram Protocol. And about the encapsulation, also we'll receive the message from application layer. And later we will add the UDP header and to become UDP segment. And then we will add the IP header. And uh, after that, this message we also call IP packets. But about the UDP header, the message is less than the TCP. We only have one, two, three, three lines, right? Source and destination port also should be used on the UDP to indicate different application layer, application layer service. And uh, we also have the checksum part. That means when the UDP receives a message, I also will check. Some message may be changed by others or not. I have to do the check. But if I found the bit is be changed by others, I will not use the UDP to let the sender give us a new message again. No, I only will send the result to up to the up layer protocol. For example, I will tell some HTTP, uh, some TFTP server, I told you this bit already be changed by others. Please make a decision to let the application, to let the sender give us a new one or not. UDP will not directly ask the sender to give us a new message. So this is the function of the checksum. So compared with TCP and UDP, the service type is different. The TCP can provide the connection or return service, but UDP only provides the connectionless service. So TCP needs so many mechanisms to provide the connection or return service, like maintain the connection data, right? Before transmission, we have to establish the connection. After transmission, we have to date. And in the transmission, we have to use some sequence number acknowledgement mechanism to keep the date transmission reliability. And we also use a window mechanism to finish the flow control. So this is the mechanism of the TCP. But about UDP, it's nothing. But the encapsulation of application layer date of the application layer date. This is the basic function of the transport layer. So TCP have and UDP also have. So this is a comparison between the TCP and the UDP. So last part. Here also is a question. In the establishment of the TCP connection, what should be the Y value in the SYN? PC and server. The PC will send the SYN message and give the sequence number to become P, and uh, the server will give the reply, and uh, the PC will give the establish message again. So this is a three-way handshake, right? So in this process, what should be the Y value? Please choose the correct answer, and I will explain the detail in the next video. Thank you. Hello, guys. Now I think you already see the training video, right? Let's have a brief summary for you. TCP and UDP use a port number to indicate the application and the service. About the TCP protocol, it is a reliable protocol. Before forwarding the packets, we will establish the connection by using the three packets handshake. In the process, we also have many mechanisms like acknowledgement, sequence number, something like this. And we also can use a window to control the traffic. About the UDP, it uses less usage. That means if you want to follow the traffic as soon as possible, 
you can choose UDP protocol. Thank you.